Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. We missed the whole game. What must it be like to visit Meadow Bank on a Saturday afternoon? The rain soaked streets, the early floodlights, to know three points won't come so soon. The manager's away, yet the team still play. We've run out of rhymes. That's it for the poetry. Mark White is missing a game for just the third time in his managerial career. And so, we at Bunch of Amateurs decided we would instead camp in the opposition dressing room and follow Chelmsford manager Robbie Simpson around, poking him with questions and figuring out what's it like to be the away team when facing Dorking Wanderers. Hi there. Tight through. Thank you. Just push that big button. Yeah. How are you? You all good? Good. Hi, mate. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, good. <laughs> I'm Robbie Simpson, I am Chelsea City Manager and we're here to play against Dorking Wanderers. I hope it's a good clash, Dorking are top of the form table, I think we're third. It's certainly a match where we can test ourselves against a side that's considered the best side in the league. Um, and I think having watched videos of recent games that Dorking have played, I would certainly agree with that. So it's going to be just a great test for our young lads, you know, we've got two 18-year-olds, two 19-year-olds, a 16-year-old on the bench, uh, for them to test themselves against a team full of um, talented players at our level, probably the best talent at our level, it's just so exciting. To, it's exciting for me to be able to watch them and see how they compete against that. I know exactly how they're going to play. Um, whether we can stop it is another thing, um, but we'll be trying our best. Obviously, I've... Um, I've more recently, due to playing Dorking, watched some of the Bunch of Amateurs uh, episodes, quite a lot of them. So I just try and take as much little bit of information that he lets slip out as much as possible and try and um, help me with my decision making on how we want to go about the, about the game. I think there'll be two contrasting styles. I think Mark likes to get the ball wide and create overloads out wide. And our main overload in these last good run of games, you know, one defeat in 12, as you said, has been mainly bodies down the middle of the pitch, being hard to beat, and then breaking into wide areas from that shape. So two conflicting styles, really, and way to go about winning football matches. So styles make fights, as they say. So we'll see who comes out on top. Um, team for us today, obviously, Danny, you're going to move to right back. Louis come in left. Um, Chez go to the right. And then Rushy come in for Charlie up top. Them lads, we did a bit of work on them on Thursday. They played 3-5-2. They could look like that. They could bring in a box four with one up top like that. They could. They rotate anyway. So that could look, that front picture could look differently all throughout the game because they rotate. But they try, I'll leave it like that just visually, because they try and leave him to get on the ball. They think he is the best player in the league. Old Acre, the one with slightly long hair. They think he's the best player in the league. Dara, you're going to do a fucking job on him today. You're going to not give him a sniff all game. Last week away at Bath, second half, they put someone on him, made them considerably weaker, in my opinion. You're going to do a job on him, just like you did that Bath lad at their place and at ours. Don't let him have a sniff, yeah? Whenever he gets the ball, I want you ratting him, nicking the ball off him. Their wide men play high. They do play high, and these will be wide which means there'll be gaps up there for us, but it's a strength of theirs. They look to switch the ball quickly, a lot of the time through him, whether it be him hitting diags to the wide man, diags to the wide man, they look to switch it quickly and create overloads there and there against wide, which could cause us trouble in our narrow shape, it could. What I don't want, Tom and Rushy, is if they do that, you to come all the way back here. I don't really want that. Come and try and stop it at source. So try and stop it at source and so maybe start a bit deeper. But don't always track him. If he gets that side of you, generally, I want our outside of Diamond, Louis, or this side, Chez, to go and engage. And we're 2v2 two two out, out wide. 2v2 two two means you can't lose your battles. It's basically one of you have got one. It's two, two of you with one plan against two of them. Don't go, both of you go to one man and leave one spare because you'll get done. Aussie, Danny, yeah? talk, it takes communication between you and Chez, 
between you and Louis. Real communication. Going forward, their striker, Rutherford, is in great form. He hunts goals. He hunts goals. You know, like I say to you strikers, run to goal. He's always running to goal. Whenever there's a, a time on the ball deep, he is facing our goal, waiting for that ball over the top. He is a live wire. So Ade, be ready for it. Zach, be ready for it, yeah? Always constantly check your shoulders. Try and find where he is. He won't like physical contact. He won't like physical contact at all. We try and make them go long, yeah? And we do that by what we did, that mid-block, like we do on Thursday. You were excellent Thursday at it. Really, really good. They try, I, I told the opposition to just try and overplay, overplay, overplay. Don't go long. But they struggled with it. They never really penetrated us. And on, today, the only way they're going to penetrate us is we switch off, someone doesn't do it, or they'll try and go long and look for Rutherford in behind or the two wide men in behind. Just snuff it out. Sit in that low block, make them go long because you will eat it up in the air against them. They won't like a long ball game, especially in these conditions. They won't like it. They won't like a horrible game. They really, really won't. Defensively, that's us. The only thing I will say is that press that we tried. For a minute and a half we tried it, didn't we? You've got to pick and choose your moments. You need to decide on the pitch when it's right to do that full court press. We scored two goals from it when we did that pattern on, on Thursday, so it can be a real threat for us. It really can. But you won't be able to do it for long, and you all need to be on the same page. You all need to do it. If one person, even just half does it, you'll get fucked. So you need to all be on the same page and all be fully committed to it. And then recognise, right, the press is over. We haven't won it back. Let's sit in. It will take 90 plus minutes of you all on the same page, all communicating, all thinking the same thing, all doing the right things, making the right decisions. You're going to need to do it from second one to the very last whistle. And you'll win the game. You will win the game today. They've got a big loss. Their manager's not there today. And the type of manager that he is, when things go wrong for him and it needs fixing on the pitch, they won't know who to turn to because it's all about him, his decisions. They all look to him. Nothing else but his way. You're going to make them think, fuck me, how are we going to fix this? And they're all going to be looking at each other. They're going to have no leaders. The captain's out as well, suspended. They'll have no leaders. You've got the upper hand already going into this game. All you need to do is turn the screw on them and they'll fold and you'll win the game. These are standing in the way of us climbing the table again. We've got an opportunity today to go above Hemel with a win. We've got an opportunity to climb the table again and go above them with a win. These are standing in our way. Let's fucking take them down and keep moving up. Come on, let's go. We need to meet some more Chelmsford people to set the scene. So let's start with Kieran, the kit man for Chelmsford. I'm Kieran and I'm the kit man for Chelmsford. I wanted a change of job. So basically I was working in theatre, uh, then moved to recruitment. And I wanted to get into football, not good enough to play, I'm too old to play now. And uh, I just emailed around local clubs and Chelsea got back to me. Um, basically setting up the kit, um, to making sure players have got their jumpers, worn out jumpers, uh, t-shirts, shorts, socks, all prepared, ready to go, so they don't have to worry about anything. Um, and then, end of the day, collect it all up, take it to the laundrette, and that's, that's about it. And what are you expecting from today's match? Quietly confident. We're on a good run. Yeah, but it's going to be difficult. It's going to be very, very difficult. And the wind and the rain, possibly, well, where we play, it's usually very windy, so hopefully that, that will work in our advantage. We wanted even more from the away side, so we ventured into the away stand to get the lowdown from the visitors, from the vis visitors. Uh, I'm Luke, I'm 17, I'm from Chelmsford, born and bred. Uh, played for Chelmsford youth teams and started watching the, the men's team. How long have you been a Chelmsford supporter? Oh, 50 odd years or more. Oh, wow. 50 odd years. Yeah. Home everywhere? Yeah, everywhere. Home and away. Home and away normally, yeah. Don't miss many matches. Yeah, everywhere. Um, have, I think I've missed about five games over the last 12 years. I like it. I think over recent months we've improved because before, before November we were terrible. And he's fixed, he's found formation, he's found a system that works and we look like a good team now and I, I fancy our chances today. Uh, pretty good at the moment. We started off pretty badly but we've picked up quite a lot now. So we're, you know, we're climbing up the table, so not too bad at the moment. It's, it's an interesting style, I'd say. Um, I think we get the ball down, we try to play as much football as we possibly can, but we 
don't look to play too much. If if there's danger, we will try and get rid of it as soon as we can. We've we've lost one in twelve, so we're in a pretty good run. And I think on a day like this, with the weather, it's sort of even to playing surface, and I, I reckon we've got a chance. He's, he's doing a good job. He started off pretty bad because obviously, when you're a new manager, you, you, you've got to take stock of what, what the situation is. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's, he's doing well at the moment. Go for a good spell. I'm not really expecting too much, but I have got faith in these lads. I'm sure they can, as long as they put 100% into it, and I know these guys will, I think we could get a result today. But it, it'll be tough, but I'm, I'm sure we can do it. We've had good times and bad times, but you know, hopefully we're, the good times are coming back again. The return of the good times seems to be occurring, with Chelmsford suffering just one defeat in the last 12 league games. And with Simo aiming for a compact, hard-to-beat mentality today, Dorking will have to push the ball out wide and avoid a busy midfield if they're to continue their assault on the title. Good. Well played, you two. Get in the box! Get in the box! Tom Blackwell and Matt Rush combined well early on to give Dawkins' win back something to think about. Midfield switch! Cheers! Cheers! Not now then. Come on, be alive! The visitors have started brightly, keeping Wanderers pinned back and making sure they don't get comfortable on the ball. Good, Danny. Well done. City are doing more than just locking things up. Danny Imre and Christian Fringpong combine to feed Tom Blackwell, but he can't quite find Louis Dunn. <laughs> yeah. See, Louis could have been in then if Tom managed to get it down. Good. Good, Ozzy. Well done, Oz. An intermittent press from City keeps Dorking at bay, but the plan to mark DJ Oldacre into oblivion forces the midfielder to drop deep and find some space regardless. Old Acre picks out Matt Briggs and the flying winger does what the flying winger does. Exactly not the start we wanted. Dara! Engage Dara! City's press isn't quite working. Instead, the home side are doing exactly what they want to do and pushing the ball into wide areas. Referee! What's that for, him? And when they work it into good positions, City aren't delivering. Get in that box! Fucking hell. Old Acre is finding space easier to come by than an anti-vaxxer at a convention for remotely smart people. And Simo's getting annoyed at Dara Dada's lack of man marking. Man, we've not heard a shout like that since Rocky climbed a mountain. Get on him! Don't worry about anything else! Go on, Danny. There you go, space is there. Turn! Tom, you on it! Tom, you're in! Go on, Tom! Go on, Tom! He's not off. He's not off. He certainly wasn't offside, but Dan Lincoln is great at coming off his line in those situations. <laughs> Laughing into my sleeve. Dorking haven't hit top gear yet, and I wish they would, especially James May. What a smug prick. Stoic defending from Adi Aluo keeps the Wanderers at bay, but the home side keep on coming. Ozzy! Get someone on him and you go there! Ozzy, keep going forward, son. And ball. Oh, fuck me. As the halfway is on, City keep the ball away from their own 18-yard box, but Dorking are a persistent threat on the counter. Run, Ozzy! Run hard! It's gone! Get the ball, Jacob! The young Chelmsford side begin to grow in confidence as they realise they can take the game to Dorking. And again, Chez! Don't drop off him, Chez! Go on, D. Do it. First pass him and shoot, son. Follow it in, you three!
As their self-belief grows, they increase their work from the back and realise they too can find space to work in. Forward, take the space. Take the space, Eddie! He might need you, Louis! Run on us in! A promising build-up comes to an end when Louis Dunn accidentally treads on Matt Briggs's foot. Briggs being the number one player, Dorking wouldn't want to see he get injured. Hey lads, well done, you've got a foothold now. Oh, you got a foothold now. You got a foothold. Keep this going. Oh, it's on to press a minute, but be ready. Wait for the right moment and then all go together. Briggs is okay to play on and the home side are filled with relief. <laughs> go with them then if they're going! Go on! Go on! Go on! Go on! Simo, meanwhile, is triggering his players into a full press and it's working. Well, almost working. <laughs> two v two! Jacob, knock down the fucking middle! Good, Louis! How are they on the front foot to it? Do you know what I mean? Good, Danny! Go on! Get in that box! Get in that box! Shift and shoot. City's attacks are promising, but Dorking's defence remains relatively comfortable. Go on! Oh my god! Shoot that! Oh my god, how did we miss that? Daniel Imray turns the ball goalwards, but Isaac Philpott is in the right place to clear off the line. Great ball. Go and head this in, someone. Go and head this in. Go on, Zach. Body, good lad. A series of corners terrorise the Wanderers, but they're managing to repel each one of them. Good lad, Chez. One of you. Great knock. What a knock that is. Shift and shoot, son. Well done, Dara. Well played. Get to that byline. He's a good defender, actually. Forward. Run. Very good. Yeah. But again, it can come from all what we said about all day having time on the ball. Yeah. We got caught, no one put a track on it. Yeah. And then we rode our luck a little bit for the first 15 minutes, but then their confidence, yeah. they try to still run the play. They're still trying to play. Yeah. And because of press, they just make a mistake. That's how we're going to score. Listen, lads, well done. Well done. It took us 15 minutes to, to get a hold of the game, really, to get a hold of it. But you've done that. You've done that. You worked your way into the game and you finished us stronger by far. By far. Um, just to touch on how they're dangerous, uh, i.e. their goal. If he drops in Dara yeah. and then starts to bring it, starts to bring it and gets his head up, that's your trigger. I've got to affect his pass. Sitting off, no effect, in, no effect of the pass. He can play that. Yeah? So as soon as he starts to bring it into that gap and, look, and gets <coughs> his head up and gets his touch out of his feet, that's when you've got to affect it. Even just by a little sprint, getting in his eye line, that affects his quality. Yeah, so you have to do that. Um, I was I was thinking about whether um, it was my fault for telling you to recognise the trigger to the press, um, because quite often when you're on the pitch, you take the safe option and you stay in shape. But you've recognised it after the first ten minutes. It is there. As soon as there's a tr an inch of a trigger, get behind each other, get vocal. Get at them. I started being more vocal and I think that helped you on the pitch. They are there to be got at when there is a trigger. When there's not a trigger, you have to stay in shape as you have done that last half hour. You have to stay in shape, but you have to recognise the trigger. You can't forget or ignore that trigger and just stay in shape the whole game. You have to recognise it because that's how we're going to win. Tom and Rushy, you've done really well. Just don't get too wide too early. We want the space. So if you go too wide too early, there isn't the space, because their men follow you. They won't be able to live with you 
if you stay narrow and the ball's played into the space for you. And it's not a driven ball that goes out. It might be against the wind, a bit more driven, but it's just leave it in that space, lads, for them to get on the end of. Yeah? It's not necessarily to put them through on goal. It's leave it in the space for them to start narrow and get there first. Yeah? Sometimes you have to just bust a gut because then that gets them back in our half. You've been great, lads. You've been great. You can sense it on the pitch, can't you? You can sense it. You've been really, really good. I'm gutted about that first 10 minutes. Gutted about it because we're 1-0 down. Get in that box. Bust a gut. We need two goals to win this game. Stay tight at the back and score two goals. Keep doing what you were doing that last half hour because it was excellent. It's excellent. Get recovered and get ready to go again. Come on. With Dorking boss Mark delivering messages by phone from Ireland, we can only imagine what the home side's team talk was all about. And it probably had something to do with starting fast, keeping the ball out wide and beating the press. Go on then. Go on then. Good, Louis. Good day. The patient build-up play has returned, and unless City can figure out the best way to press, Old Acre and company are going to start picking holes. Why is no one up his ass? Do it, can, Tom! Simo wants Dara to block off Old Acre, but DJ is selling him dummies like he's a sales rep for Mothercare. Yes, Chaz! Need you, Chaz! Need you, Chaz! Good luck, Chaz! Good luck, Danny and Ray! And just as the players are working out their opponent's attack, Simo has worked out that the Dorking coaching team only sit down when Mark's there to tell them to. Literally not one of them are sitting down. Oh, stay there! Anything count that you do! Turn! Too easy! Nick Wheeler's excellent cross is turned in by Alfie Rutherford, but the striker is offside and City survived the scare. Yes, Danny! On his touch, Danny! Wanderers keep coming, and Wheeler once again gives the Chelmsford right back a torrid time. Should be ours. James McShane turns the defenders inside out and slots home to make it 2 0. Started the same as we did the first half. We're not at it. He's got to give him a chance. He's got to give himself a chance that when, as he has his touch, he's on him. Yeah, you can send him back. Yeah. Should be ours. Good, Louis. Good, Louis. Go on, Rushy. Run to goal, Rushy. Good defending. Very good defending. Just as they did in the first half, Dorking dominate the opening 15 minutes. Nick Wheeler is the next to threaten the City goal. Cal Kennedy then accepts the open invitation to test goalkeeper Jacob Marsden. If we change shape to a three, we'll just get pinned back into a five. If anything, we need to just have three high up. We'll go Rushy down the middle, Tom wide left, Freddie wide right, or just a three, does that mean a flat three? We'll give up a man in midfield though, so we've got to press. We've got to press and make him go long. Simo wants to put three players up top in order to put pressure on the Dorking back three and force them to go long. Go on, good lad. And just like in the first half, City's young players are growing in confidence after a shaky start to the second. Well done, Chaz! Feed him, feed him! No, uh, it's not on. Get in! Oh! Dara's cross is turned goalwards by Matt Rush, but the striker sees his effort bounce back off the post. Great, Edda. Come on, Red! Can't be, can't be offside from a goal kick. Can't be offside from a goal kick, lads. The young defence gets away with a naive offside ploy when Marsden beats Rutherford to Dan Lincoln's long kick. And Chelmsford get back on the front foot and look for another opening as they begin to believe there's something in this game for them. Well done, Chaz! Well done, Chaz! Get in the box! Score! Score! Shoot! You have to score! Just pass it in the corner. 
Tom Blackwell and Dara Dada both have openings, but neither can get through every level of the Dorking rearguard. Still, Chelmsford tails are up and Dorking are looking flustered, especially when Cal Kennedy underplays his back pass. Yeah, we can't help but feel Cal's got away with one there. Get wide! Yes, Danny! Fucking hell, Christian. Fucking hell, Christian. Good lad, Jacob. Well done, Ozzy. Good lad, Louis. Get the ball, though, lad. Get the ball. With 10 minutes to go, Chelmsford put three up top. And while it nullifies the Dorking build-ups, it does also bring an end to the action. Although Simo does get a chance here to give the Lino a bit of stick. Ozzy! Go off that way! Go on, get yourself up. Lionel, we've got another one, you know. Could you not see two white men here? That sums it up to me, honestly, yeah? Number three, he's already gone off. He's already gone off. He couldn't even see two, two players waiting to come on. Great little pass. Too slow, Ches. Too slow, Ches. Well done. Well done, well done. Well done, chaps. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done, lads. Well done, mate. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done. Well done, mate. I mean, first term in this, we were just sloppy. Well, it was outside the box, but it's standing up. It's true. Well done, lads. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Rashi, well done, son. Work your nuts off. He found you, didn't he? Was that him on the neck? Was that when it was? Appreciate it. No, right lads, just listen in. Um, it's kind of a, the same story as the first half really. First 10 minutes, we just took a while to get to grips with it. Um, and they punished us in first 10 minutes of the first half, they punished us. First 10 minutes of the second half, they punished us. They were clinical, they were a good team. Bar that, for the rest of the 60 minutes of that match, last half hour of the first, last half hour of the second half, I couldn't be more proud of you, to be honest. I couldn't be more proud of you. You stuck to task, you took it to them, you stayed disciplined, you stayed together. You, stayed, you really stayed together. I could see that from the side. You were all together, all encouraging. You were really good fellas, honestly. I'm really, really proud of you. Things didn't go our way, you know? Little things didn't go our way. Tom's chance, the sending off for you that, that you were clean for on goal, your header as well. Little moments just didn't quite go for us today. But don't be downhearted whatsoever whatsoever. You have taken it to a team that's top of the league, that's won 11 out of the last 12 games, whatever it is, something silly, and you've taken it to them. They fucking had to work hard for that victory, and that's all I can ask for you. They've had to work really, really hard, and they've had to be clinical. Like I say, bar a bit of, I would say, just getting used to the conditions, etc. A little bit of detail, just to give you a little bit of detail, when you're playing against the wind like that, you have to you two, especially you and Zach, you have to take the space. If you just stay with the wind in your mush, they're sitting off you or there's space there and you pass it to someone who's not only got the wind up their backside, someone else up their backside running towards you, you're inviting trouble. You're inviting press, 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 press. You have to take the space to draw someone out and then slip past or then slip it down the side. You two have to be the ones. And Jacob, you're going to have the one that gives it to them and encourages them. Go, take the space. Take the space. You did it brilliantly, my side, when I encouraged you. Brilliantly, it made such a difference. A couple of times your side, in the end, you did, you did it and you made such a difference, didn't it? It made such a difference. It got us up the pitch. Against the wind, you just have to find ways to get the team up the pitch. Hitting long passes from deep doesn't do that. Hitting short passes to encourage a press doesn't get us out. Doesn't get us out. That does. You stepping in, taking the space, committing someone, and then we're through. Listen, Dad, don't be downhearted. We go again next week, yeah? We pick ourselves up, recover, and we go again next week, and we take the three points back, all right? Well done, really proud of you, well done. Come on, come on. How are you feeling? 
positive. Yeah, I'm feeling positive. It's tough and frustrating as a manager when you work on a game plan. Um, and I make no bones about it, we came to frustrate Dorking um, to begin with in the early part of the game. Maybe throw them off their rhythm, maybe get them to try and do things that they wouldn't usually do, especially with with their manager not being here. and. Um, and after three minutes, we concede, and that kind of it really frustrates you as a as a manager. Um, but I was really, really proud. The first 15 minutes, we, we we looked a little bit all over the place. Like we react, we reacted to that goal, um, and we're kind of playing off the cuff. Um, but the players regrouped, gradually built their way into the first half over the course of the next 15 minutes. And I thought the final 15 minutes we we finished the stronger and um, we had one cleared off the line and, and I feel like we probably warranted a goal really in, the, in that first half. I think if we'd have gone in at, at one all, I don't think there would have been any complaints. I, th I feel like they obviously started really well, um, but we I was so proud of our young team how we didn't fold. It's, it would have been easy to come here to the league leaders um, concede that early and then fold. Yeah, I think there's a, a lot that we can sort of be proud of to take from the from the performance. Um, obviously, initially we were really disappointed conceding so early um, in both halves. But I think the main bulk of the game, yeah, there was a, a lot of possession um, from Dorkin, but also spe especially second half, we had our had our chances, and towards the end of the first half. Um, and the end of the game, we had our own territory as well. Yeah, well, we, we tried to make them go long. And um, so we tried to like stay in shape and we knew that they were going to try and switch the ball quickly. So we, we tried our best to stop that or, or we had a plan to try and stop that. Um, but I wanted us to have triggers to then go and press. I feel like we could have really hurt them offensively with a with a press a real high intense press and i left that decision on the pitch to the players you know spot a trigger where you can then flick a switch and you're all out press and for the first 15 minutes of both halves really they kind of took the safe option they weren't brave enough to go and do it right from the outset of both halves um, but eventually like i said they built themselves up to be brave enough to do it and we looked really dangerous of the amount of energy and good runners that we have in the team. Um, I think in terms of style of play, it's, it's, very, it's very varied, it's very mixed in, in terms of how we, how we set up. If it's on to play, we play, but if we sometimes need to go a bit longer and more direct and pick up second balls and, and sort of get territory um, with longer passes, then we'll do so as well. Um, so yeah, and, uh, but obviously Simo sets us out. We all take on board what he says and, and look to put that out on the pitch as best we can as, as a team. I always look at myself first after defeats and, um, and victories to see what I said, what I did, what worked well, what I thought worked well, what maybe I regretted saying. And I think the one regret for me is that as soon as I knew that we were with the wind first half, not giving them, not instructions, but not giving them that belief to be a bit braver with that press and their decision when to press. Um, maybe I could have. It might not have worked because I could have said, right, go for them from the outset. First 15 minutes, I want you at them. They could have easily then picked us off and scored, scored in that sense as well. So hindsight's a wonderful thing, but I do wish coming away from that, that I'd tried to make our lads be a bit braver, not just leaving the decision to them, actually being a bit more forceful. Uh, I am absolutely loving being part of this football club. We've got a new project, a new philosophy. You know, Chelmsford of old, three, four years ago, was like a dorking. It was a big spender, getting the best players from the league and the leagues above and, and trying to entice them down here financially. Um, but they've, they've had a big change in their model, um, Chelmsford, and it's a change that I'm really passionate about. I'm really passionate about bringing youngsters through. I was a youngster myself at this level and went on to have a, a, a very fortunate career playing football for over a decade. And I want to give that opportunity to youngsters. Dorking are an amazing community club. I think that's where the two clubs align. 
Um, we're trying to be a real pillar in our community of Chelmsford. Um, and we want to be a sustainable football club. You know, we don't um, want to rely on an owner's money because that owner can... Mark's a bit different because he's fully invested in the club. And, but um, we, we don't want to be in a position where if the owner leaves, they're stuck in a financial hole. It's funny because um, the quote I hear from Mark on youngsters the most is, I fucking hate kids. I hate fucking kids, goalkeepers and referees. <laughs> <laughs> and just finally... I hate two of those too. <laughs> <laughs> what is a Saturday night like in the Simpson household after a defeat like that? Can you get it out of your mind? Well, I try and get home to, to put my daughter to bed and that really just then, I can then switch off. As soon as I see her, I can switch off from football. I probably won't do that tonight. I won't make it back in time because she's up in Cambridge with the in-laws, but I am going to head up there. And um, I, I might go and visit a few friends and have a, a couple of beers watching Brook v Khan. <laughs> so I'll, I'll unwind like that tonight, but usually I try and get home, put my daughter to bed, have some food, chill out, watch TV with the wife and um, go to bed. Pretty boring, really. You probably wanted something more exciting there, didn't you? <laughs> Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs. If you wouldn't mind, could you hit subscribe? Then you won't miss any more episodes. And if you hit like, that helps us reach more people, as does commenting. And this week's comment of the week comes from Boston Brum, who says, you know you're hooked when you look for Dawkins results right after looking at the team you have supported for 50 years. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Boston Brum. You might want to look at your possessive apostrophes, but otherwise that was well-intentioned.